um, I think it's a fantastic idea. I, I think it's brilliant. But ch the young people of Kelso won't be able to access these facilities because the buses stop too early. And I was wondering if, you know, a, a couple of nights a week, not, not every night, but a couple of nights a week, there couldn't be a minibus just purely to take children or young people to these facilities and return them back again to the village so that they can, they can access this sort of thing. Who's going to pick up that one? I'll, I'll pick that one up because that's absolutely what this, this model of area working I was, I was just wittering on about is, has, has already identified. So the partnership board that serves the council area has three key themes and one of its principal um, focus um, for, for the, the, the sort of next three years is access to services. It's no point the council coming up with the best idea in the world if we can't get people there. And so you could fund the minibus, could you? Uh, not me personally, but I'm sure there's probably somebody on this table working in a, uh, a joined up way with other agencies that it's not beyond the wit of man, is it, that we could put on a bus oh. to... Uh, well, I, I, no, I'm, I'm, only, I'm only asking because sometimes at meetings, you know, people say, oh, yes, that would be a good idea, and they say yes, and then you come up, I mean, we've heard about the, 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 the difficult financial uh -huh. climate, so all through the morning you're going to hear me being really boring and saying, are you sure this could be funded? Uh, but, but how many of our schools, particularly our secondary schools, have a minibus that when the schools close, that minibus is parked up? So if there are specific groups of young people, why can't we just, you know, work with our community to have, you know, approved and insured drivers who could transport those kids using a facility that's owned by the community? Good answer. Mm -hmm. uh, other points. Just, just, if just wait for the microphone, so if you would. Nick Sybil from Chester. Um, one of my concerns is um, the fact that the council owns property, or the education boards do. So I have concerns about sell-off of school playing fields, which is a facility which will never come back, and specifically in the case of Chester, worries about the old city bus, which I believe the city council owns, and the running of those city bus are dependent very much on having effectively a peppercorn rent to the um, swimming clubs, and yet that is very important for the development of swimming in Chester and in the area because it is a serious club. Yeah, right. No. Thank right. you. Right. Richard, Richard first. Sorry. And then, okay. Well, there's a particular point about the uh, swimming baths or city baths in Chester. Um, that is actually a very, very crucial part of our swimming um, development programme on the leisure side. Um, as you well know, we have the Northgate Arena, which provides, uh, if you like, leisure swimming. The city baths is a real sport activity, swimming. Uh, we do have a, a schemes which we are looking at refurbishing the old baths with the intention of making sure the Chester Swimming Association and all the splinter groups will continue to operate that particular facility. It's a listed building. It's going to cost a lot of money to keep it in condition. But we are formulating plans now, and I can assure you that will stay. I'm reassured to hear it because I know a few years ago there were plans to get rid of it or attempts to get rid of it. <coughs> right. Uh, different view point. Yeah. Uh, may I invite uh, Dr. Stevens, who is the director, to uh, just clarify this one about the selling of playing fields uh, by schools. <coughs> Yes, there, for some years now, there's been a uh, very strict regulation about the disposal of playing fields in response, actually, to some, um, some sales that did take place in the past and which people recognised uh, were not uh, necessarily the best use of a good resource. So now, the Sports England regulations are absolutely clear that where any designated playing field is taken out of commission for another purpose, it has to be replaced within the area um, of uh, the same size or greater and at least as good quality as that which has been disposed of. So they are protected now by Sporting the Regulation. Okay, let's move on to our next question, please. Could Christopher Chapman from Northwich identify him? So there he is. Thank you, Mr Chapman. Right, thank you. Uh, my question is, how does the authority plan to provide a continually improving standard of education for our children in the coming years of financial stringency? 
This requires us to think and act differently. Um, first of all, we have taken the opportunity since we came into power on the 1st of April of establishing the new council in, in looking at our structures and work practices. This has reduced duplication and ensured we are focusing more on our priorities. Secondly, um, the directorate um, is developing a more comprehensive performance management process to ensure we manage and monitor our progress against the resources we deploy. And thirdly, um, we will um, have a large impact on education standards and other outcomes by targeting our resources in areas <coughs> of greater need. And finally, uh, we're working very closely, as Dr. Chapman knows, with schools to ensure that we develop consistently high quality for all. And this is about looking at uh, learning opportunities that are organized and how well we're developing different pathways that are most suited to different uh, forms of learning, which are obviously our children have. Okay, uh, Leader of the Council, then I'll come back to Mr. Um, Chairman. Thank you, Jim. Uh, this covers, again, it's a point on capital expenditure and what we're going to do now. Just to give you a feel, we've inherited quite a lot of the assets from, from uh, the previous councils. And in there, we're doing some work on this, and we've firmed up already that we've got something like £103 million worth of backlog of maintenance on our roads. That means that we're spending, the money we spend on roads now is less than the cost of deterioration per year. So the roads are getting worse, and many of you have commented on in the previous sessions. We've inherited primary schools where we've got something between 40 and 60 mobile classrooms. Some of them are 40 to 50 years old. Our children freeze in the winter and cook in the summer. Not the most conducive environment for educating our young people. We've got something like 140 million pounds worth of cultural and sports assets to replace. We've only got three new assets. You're sitting in one of them now. This opened in March 2009. We've got the swimming pool at Christleton, and we've got the Olympic running track at Ellsbury Pool. Everything else is either obsolete or not far off obsolete or needs a great deal of money spending on it. We need a new theatre in Chester, a cultural centre in Northwich. The bill is about £140 million. Pounds. We've got adult social services where we have centres where our vulnerable adults who've come along to day centres are very old, outdated and expensive to run and we've got adult uh, facilities for adults uh, with learning difficulties. Again, somewhat institutionalised compared to the modern way of thinking about how we should be providing care. I mean, this, this question is about the standard of education. Yeah, nobody it's comes, the answer to the question, you can't do anything for it. Well, no, no, we'll come into that. Right. Don't even, <laughs> um, the bill is something like about £500 million. Pounds. Now, we can do what previous councils have done and say, well, OK, that's a government's responsibility. Where's the funding? What can we do? We can't sit there and do that, in my view. And what we're looking at is how we can fund that. For every £8 million pounds we save in our revenue, we can borrow £100 million. Pounds. So that might be one way. We can reduce the costs. So we've got a contract that's got 10 years contract to renew on road. We can probably get 15 20% off that contract. We've got private sector funding we can bring in, and we can get grants out of any, and we can sell some of our assets sell some of our assets. That's going to be quite controversial. But if we add that together, bear in mind our assets include farms, should the council be running farms, we have, we have business parks, should we be running business parks and using capital to build new business units, or should we leave that to the private sector? We own retail units. We own 32 shops in Chester, that's probably £30 million pounds of assets. Should we be running shops or should we be providing the sort of sports and recreation facilities? So, so where does the standard of education fit into this plan? It fits in in that we need to find the money and we need to find it in a, in a coherent capital plan where we can invest over a 10 year plan. And my commitment to you is we'll come and consult with you on this in June this year when we'll have all the plans available. Not only what we're going to build, where we're going to invest, where we're going to be furbished, but how we're going to afford to do it. And it covers the points the gentleman raised about Chester swimming baths, because it's £1.7 million pounds we need for that. It covers the points about other sports facilities, and it covers about the point about our education and our young people uh, in buildings that actually are not fit for purpose. Okay. Uh, now, 